So to dig into something that uh, you've been looking at for quite a while, uh, actually written a book about called The Decision Tree, um, the frame for this year's summit is, is data, I mean, mm -hmm. the data frame as they say. Um, what's happening in the space of healthcare and personal healthcare data? Right, so, so at Wired we've been really into big data for, for years. A few years ago we, had a, we did a big cover package um, that we called the Petabyte Age. Uh, that didn't catch on, but we like the term still, the petabyte age. Right. It's kind of uh, evocative of the, the scale of data now. Um, and healthcare has a huge amount of data. Healthcare is, is awash in data. Um, uh, just look at something like um, genetics. Uh, I'm talking with Anne Majewski today, and you know her company, 23andMe, creates um, millions of data points on demand for its customers. Um, and uh, the, the other side of that is parsing, as it always is in any industry, parsing that data to find the, uh, the meaning. What is, what is the meaning telling you? So, um, so that's one scale of data. The other, the other kind of big uh, trend in healthcare data is um, data that exists in the system uh, or that is kind of newly coming uh, available by accelerometers or other kind of tracking tools and helping, that, helping use that data to um, make people aware of where they stand and help them make better decisions. So that's a that's another kind of big opportunity for data in, in healthcare. So uh, we've heard just the, the the positives and some of the negatives here. There's uh, someone from the NSA, uh, formerly of the NSA here, Thomas Drake, mm -hmm. um, and uh, sort of the dark side of data. And, and with, in the context of healthcare, can you talk about some of the opportunities and potential downstream benefits uh, to really more open data in that context and, and also some of the potential privacy, security, and other uh, downfalls that might exist for patients. Right. Well, in healthcare is, is unique in the sense that um, most of the data that exists is personal, uh, personally derived. So it derives from somebody's individual experience, whether it be their, their uh, experience in the doctor's office and their, their uh, prescriptions and their treatment um, data, mm -hmm. or something like genetic data. So, so um, but that all is rooted in the individual. And that's important because that means that um, in many ways you own that data, right? It, it, it is your data that, that other companies are holding for you or your hospital is holding for you. Um, but it's also something where the, the province of extracting the meaning out of that data has been um, very cloistered and the province of doctors or um, care providers and oftentimes shut off from uh, the actual uh, generator or owner of the data, the individual. So um, one of the biggest challenges is actually just giving people's data back to them mm. in a fluid and readily uh, understandable, comprehensible way. That's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Privacy um, is obviously a big deal in, in healthcare. Uh, there is the uh, HIPAA law is is in effect in healthcare. The health insurance, I'm sorry, health information privacy and portability act. Mm -hmm. um, the portability means. Uh, it's a law that is supposed to enable the transfer of data readily. Uh, it, as a lot of the laws do, it has the uh, kind of the opposite effect. It in, impedes the transfer of data. Um, so uh, there are, there are. I would say that there are huge um, privacy provisions that already exist in healthcare. Um, that isn't to say there are, aren't occasional breaches, which make uh, front page news. But um, by and large, uh, the problem in healthcare is not um, creating more privacy. It's to more readily give people their own data. Now, uh, speaking of that. The Department of Defense and Veterans Affairs Administration uh, have pioneered this uh, blue button approach yeah. to being able to download data. Um, and that uh, looks like it's got some traction in that particular pretty large patient base. Uh, certainly uh, Walgreens and Aetna said they'll support yeah. it too. Do you, do you see that standard catching on and as a, a likely uh, vector for peop people being able to download a personal health record? Yeah, so blue button is awesome. Blue okay. button is, is uh, in many ways the most um, intuitive and obvious thing that should have happened um, decades ago, but but finally we're we're getting there now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just there's a blue when you go to your your patient portal, your your uh, information on the website. Mm -hmm. There's a blue button, and you push it, and that exports your data to you. So then you can do with it what you may. Now um, and and there are uh, about half a million people in the VA system who already have access, who are already using, um, who've already downloaded that data. Um, and because of Aetna and, and other providers or other people who have uh, patient data, that number is going to grow quite quickly. Now, that um, export is, is actually done in an ASCII file, so it's, it's a really, it's almost raw, it's raw text mm -hmm. file. So the trick is most of us, um, even, even people here at, at the, the summit, aren't necessarily um, going to know what to do with that. Uh, but what you to read do with machine that. code. 
yeah. exactly. So it's machine code. So so uh, making sense of that data mm -hmm. is a huge opportunity for companies, for industry, for for startups, um, and it's something that. Um, I think you know those those half million people who have already pushed the button. It's maybe a novelty and and maybe a um, a gesture of of uh, uh, empowerment and ownership, but it's we still have a long way to go um, to turn the the blue button into a fully functioning um, opportunity for people to take their data and and live healthier lives because of that. And that's really the 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 goal here is to use data to help people make better choices and have healthier lives. So. In the context of that, um, the the big question that I'm really thinking through here as much as I can, because it seems sort of awe-inspiringly huge, is the question of healthcare costs. I was looking at the um, the budget breakdown actually uh, recently, and because someone said, "Oh, the military spends uh, the most of the money." It's actually, I think, the entitlements we should be looking at. So, so Med Medicare, Medicaid costs, uh, Social Security, those actually suck up a bigger piece of that pie. Mm -hmm. um, how is this? Uh, data frame and in a larger context the internet uh, changing what's possible with respect to driving down costs and uh, to specifically uh, getting to some of these these better outcomes and I um, I'm, I'm interested in, in any number of approaches the uh, sort of the canonical article I keep coming back to is actually a tool Gawan's uh, healthcare hotspot in New Yorker yeah, piece yeah. Um, which used a combination of data gathering and, and a number crunching to figure out uh, different places where uh, care could be given that might reduce costs within the system. Uh, what are you seeing? Right. So, so the um, the economics are pretty straightforward. There's 2.7 trillion dollars uh, spent on healthcare in the United States. Um, uh, four years ago, that was less than a tr two trillion. Now it's now it's 2.7 trillion. So it's growing incredibly fast. 900 billion of that. So so about a third of that is pure waste. So the stuff that uh, Gawande um, uh, wrote that great story about, um, you know, that's waste. That's that's a, a misallocation of resources. Um, it's it's extra testing that we don't need to be doing. It's um, it's redundant testing. Um, it's uh, getting people, uh, giving people care too late in the process um, when they could have had an intervention earlier. So, so the waste, just the waste side of, of that um, pot of money is the first um, glaring opportunity for data. So, so data put to that waste would, I mean, as data does in other industries, it it streamlines priorities. It makes it clear, um, in much more uh, real time fashion, what are the needs and uh, 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 kind of opportunities, risks, benefits of applying the resources that we have, and uh, data can inform um, those choices and on a, on a system wide basis and eliminate a lot of that waste. So. Um, you know, that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, then you get into other areas like uh, applying data to personal decision making so people are empowered to act earlier, um, so they're, they're actually engaging in more preventive care. Um, so you, that preventive care is typically much less expensive than, than um, chronic care or, or um, acute care that's um, uh, usually done later in the disease cycle. Um, that stuff is expensive. So once you start getting at that stuff, once you um, start helping people make better decisions earlier um, and getting into individual behavior, that is another opportunity where data can come along and, and help change uh, the system and, and, and save money. So now we get to see people take up the opportunities, right? Yeah, and it's a big, it's a big if. I mean, you know, uh, there is one reason it costs 2.72, I mean, Whatever healthcare, we could talk for hours about why healthcare is such a messed up industry, um, and uh, the the structure and organization of it is is so complicated and so um, uh, uh, ill conceived that um, you know the opportunity now we're only now on the threshold of bringing some of the tools that are have been existent in other industries and bringing them to healthcare, and that's why I think it's so exciting that you know something a place like Web 2.0 Summit and and O'Reilly and and Tim O'Reilly and all these other kind of people who have done some great innovations in traditional technology industries are now seeing that healthcare is the big opportunity, and and so hopefully uh, the same kind of um, transformation and improvements will will uh, come to healthcare. Okay. Well, thanks again to Thomas Getz. He is uh, the executive editor of Wired. You can follow him at T Getz, G O E T Z, on Twitter. He is the author of The Decision Tree, an excellent book on personalized health data and more. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for the plugs. All right.